Okay, welcome back for another video. Uh, in this video, I am going to demonstrate how you can set speeds and feeds for specific tools and uh, create basically your own library. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, by no means is the way I'm going to show you the right way, maybe not even the best way. It's just the way that I prefer. So if you find a way that you like doing it better, um, you know, by all means, uh, feel free to do that and if um, you know if you if you find a way that you think is a lot more efficient than this uh, leave a comment and, and let me know and uh, I'd be happy to uh, take a look at it and um, consider making a video about it and, and demonstrating it because uh, you know this is just the way that I found and the way that I kind of prefer uh, but it, it really is more of a preference thing so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with machine, and I'm going to pick my lathe. All right. Um, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to do my plane quick, just because that is force of habit. All right. Now, uh, I want to change the lathe tool. So I'm going to go over to my lathe tool manager. And the, the easiest way I've found to do this is basically go into your lathe tool manager, right click on a tool that you want to change or that you want to set up and edit it. Uh, so I already set one of these up. I, I'm okay with this one. I'm actually going to I'm going to do a profile tool. I set a profile tool up earlier, but I set it up with a 32,000 nose radius. I'm going to set one up with a 15,000 nose radius. So I'm going to go ahead and edit tool. And this already has a 64th radius on it. Um, so that's fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this one up with that 64th. Um, in here, you can find, this is how you edit any tool. So I can create basically any tool I want. I can do a threading tool. This is where I tell it what kind of tool under my general turning type. Um, then under inserts, right now I'm under general turning. Um, then under inserts, I can select basically any of the, the normal inserts. I can also draw my own insert if I wanted to. Um, I can hit draw tool, set up tool, I can really, I, I just have a ton of, um, of flexibility here with how I create an insert. So I can create a custom insert if I really wanted to. But these are all your commons. So these are common sizes. Um, I am obviously using a 35 degree diamond, which is a letter V. Um, that is the letter that represents it, V and MG on your insert pack. Um, of course, your half inch, this is the inscribed circle, and that is um, that's a pretty standard size. And then, uh, well, this is actually, so this is represented by eighths. So this is the number four here. That number four is how many eighths the inscribed circle diameter is. So four eighths obviously is a half inch. Um, so that's what this number here means. Um, the three, that is the thickness in sixteenths. So it is three sixteenths, as you can see. And the last one, the one, that is in sixty-fourths, the corner radius. So you have one sixty-fourth corner radius. If this were a two, it would be a thirty-second corner radius. Um, sometimes you'll see a point, or just a 05 here. So it'd be four digits to have a zero five. That, or, or yeah, so that would be 0 0.5. Um, that is an 8,000, so it's a half of a 64th. Uh, so they can get a little, little complicated, um, you know, and they keep getting more complicated. They add different geometries, and there's a bunch of stuff after this number now that, you know, represent the chip break and, and all kind of crazy stuff. But that's the basic, um, the, the basic, uh, gist of how these these work. Um, the end there, that's just a neutral rake. So you can see here, you have a neutral. So we had like an A, this would be an A, three degree rake. Um, so anyway, a neutral rake is fine. Um, so, okay, so let's move on there. Um, let's go to holders. So this is where you can change your holder. So rather than having your diamond offset like this so that you're doing a regular turning operation, uh, maybe you need clearance so that you can maybe do um, kind of like a radius. You can have your, your V so that it's 
just going straight on rather than being turned a little bit or rotated a little bit. Uh, so that's where you can set this holder up. And you can, again, you can draw a holder, create your own holder so that it's exactly um, however you want it to be. Um, this here is where you can set your shank. So you set your shank. This is a one inch shank. It's, it's a square shank. Um, for a boring bar, obviously, I would probably have it be a round shank and I would set up whatever diameter that is. Uh, so if you run into issues, maybe sometimes with a boring bar, if you see your tool coming in in simulation, it has a square shank, uh, you can come in here and you can edit it and make it a round shank and, uh, you know, it'll work a lot better with a round shank, especially a boring bar. Um, but there are some tools in here. That's why I, I bring that up. There are some tools in the library that are boring bars that are square shank, which is not really right, but, um, you need to come in and edit those if, if need be. Uh, but what we're going to focus on here is the speeds and feeds, and that's under parameters. So as I come into parameters here, um, my feed rate, I'm going to leave it at 0 0.005 because I have a smaller tool nose radius. Um, if I had a bigger tool nose radius, I'd probably increase that a little bit. My spindle speed, however, needs to change. So I'm going to bring that up to 1,000 because that is the constant surface speed for our Kenamental inserts in steel. So that is going to come up to 1,000. Um, coolant, you can actually toggle your coolant on here. So you can say coolant on. Um, and just about any other things that, that uh, go to the toolpath parameters or the cutting parameters here. Really all I wanted to change was that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, um, actually, let me just go and take a look. Tool name. OD finish right, 35 degree, 0 0.032, oh no, 0 0.015 R. So that's the tool nose rate. So I'm just going to change that number because that's, that way it doesn't overwrite the tool I put in here earlier. Okay, uh, here's the tool library that I created. Um, yeah, so if... Um, if you create a tool library, all you need to do is click on it and hit save. And it's going to say, do I want to replace it? Yes. It's updated. All right. Okay, so that tool should now be in there. So let's go ahead and create a quick part. Zero comma zero. And test this out. Okay, check. Stock setup. It looks good. Check. All right. Uh, first thing I need to do is go to my library. Obviously, these are not. This is not my library. So I'm going to bring my library up. My new one, Steel Tools. Okay, you can see I have my three tools in here. Um, Right here, I have a 32nd radius. Here, I have my 16th radius, or sorry, 64th radius. Um, and here is the tool I created earlier. So I'm just going ahead and select this for the roughing. Hit check. And you can see there, I selected that, and there is my correct spindle speed. Um, so that came in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select that, hit check. And there we go. Finish pass, last, check. And let's say I want to do it with a 30 second radius. You can see there, spindle speed that I set up is in there. If I want to go to this one, spindle speed is in there. Everything is correct. I already set all my operation defaults, even my corner breaks in there, check. It's done. Uh, this saves me a incredible amount of time because I don't need to go through and change all of those parameters. They're already done. So all I really need to do is click on this, click what I want, click the tool I need, and I'm done. I don't have to set anything. Now, obviously, if I need to change any of this stuff in here, you know, because it's, it's going to change depending on what I'm doing sometimes, um, yeah, then I have to come in and do it. But uh, if I'm just doing basic turning like this, I should be fine. And see here, I even put my, uh, my corner break on there. So everything looks good. 
So anyway, that is how you create uh, your own tool library. And um, let's just say, let's create another one real quick. Um, let's go to our regular library. Let's go to lathe inch open. Um, Cause what I do is I just copy these tools essentially. I, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to create all new ones. That just doesn't seem rational. Um, especially not when you already have these in here. So here's one that I use a lot. Um, so I use this one quite a bit. So I'm going to pull this one up. I'm going to edit it, edit tool. And let's say I want to make this for aluminum. So I'm going to go ahead and go over. And let's say an aluminum, my surface speed is 3000. I'm not really sure what it is off the top of my head, but let's say it is, and I'm just going to create this for aluminum. I'm going to hit save to library. Um, I do not have a current library. So what I did was I just right click in here and I hit new. Um, actually, I'm just going to label a new library. Sorry, did it the wrong way. Uh, so I'm going to say, let me see here. Uh, let's get half of it in there. Lathe. Aluminum tools, and I'm gonna hit save. Library updated successfully. Check. Okay. Um, so now, if I go to my libraries, I have two. I have a new library. Uh, yes, and you can see only that one's in there because it's the only one I added. So that's how you actually create the library. You just basically name your new library. Um, now let's say I want to bring that one over to, well, I can actually just edit this one. So I can hit edit, tool, parameters, uh, spindle speed, let's say our content service speed for this one's about 600 for this insert. Uh, I'm going to hit save to library and I'm going to save this one to the steel library, hit save. Yes. Okay updated that library. Now if I go to my steel library, now I have that tool in there as well. So these are the main tools that I use. Um, so you'll be seeing me use this library quite a bit in uh, future videos. Um, anyway, I believe that is all I have for you. Um, just, uh, yeah, let me know if there's a way that uh, you'd like to do it better, uh, that you think maybe is a little bit more efficient. But uh, I, I generally like to create my own libraries for material, based on material. That way I can have different inserts in here. I can name these, you know, this one is a um, KM, I don't know, KM 550 or, or you know, whatever it is. Um, generally, the higher the number, the the tougher the insert, the lower the number, the harder the insert. So uh, I can basically create each tool for different grades of insert and stuff like that. Now you would generally use pretty much one or two grades per material. So that way it helps me separate them. So I just find that to be the easiest way for me. But uh, it's definitely not necessarily the right. I don't know that there is a right way. Um, just it's more about preference. So um, anyway. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know uh, during office hours or, of course, you can see me during class.